Hi everyone, today I'm going to explain how a controller hotbar, known as a cross hotbar or crossbar for short, works. I will also be covering how to use system configuration to alter your controller settings if you choose to. First, I'm going to enable the crossbar. This can be done in the HUD layout. by right clicking or in character config high bar settings cross and making sure enable crossbar is enabled. And to make it easier to see I'm going to make it a little bigger. <laughs> Is this big enough yet? I'm also going to open the system configuration and put it right here. So, a crossbar mimics the layouts of the face and d-pad buttons on a typical controller. In Final Fantasy XIV, using the buttons by themselves has default behavior that you can't fully customize, like jumping. Or selecting. You can then use modifiers to change to a different section of the crossbar. Just like how regular mouse and keyboard users might use shift or control to do different key combinations. There's the left modifier and the right modifier. Left, right, left, right, gone, correct. I think you get the picture. So once you activate the crossbar, you then use the face or d-pad buttons to actually activate the actions you've allocated on it. Pretty simple. So, what are these left and right modifiers? Well, we're going to have to go into system configuration to show that. Do you know that it's called system configuration, not character configuration? Changing it should change it for every character on the console or computer. Let's go over them somewhat quickly, but not necessarily in order. The first one is the most important one. Enable controller. I know, it says gamepad, as if 99.99999% of people don't call it a controller. If you're on PS4, this will be enabled by default. If you're on PC, it will be disabled by default, so make sure it's turned on. Device is the controller you're using. First gamepad, now device. Can't stick to a term, huh? Gamepad, hey look, we're back to gamepad type, is the layout of the button. This can be visible on the crossbars in various hop text if you choose to. You have three choices. A, B, X, Y. This is the Xbox layout. If, like me, you use a Switch Pro controller or some other generic controller where A and B are reversed from what you would see on an Xbox controller, it might be easier to just go to the Sony layout. There are two of them. One with a touchpad for if you're using an actual PS4 enable controller. Keep gatepad enabled while client is inactive allows the controller to remain functional even if you tap to another program. This is mostly for PC players. Enable vibration is fairly self explanatory. Do you want your controller to vibrate? <laughs> I'm skipping the next two and onto analog stick sensitivity. This changes the sensitivity of both of the analog sticks, though it may feel like it's not affecting them equally depending on what your starting sensitivities for each analog are if you have them set to different settings or if your controller just natively does different sensitivities. If you are using another system to affect these, whether it's from Steam or a mapper or something within the PS4 itself, I would recommend doing that there first if you haven't already done so because you've played other games, and then make the minor adjustments here. We're moving on to calibration. This allows you to actually tell the game, this is my d-pad, this is my triangle, this is my analog stick. Ideally, you want to do this before you mess with the sensitivity. I'm not going to show this because I'm very happy with my calibration and have no desire to potentially mess with it. I've had issues. So on to button configuration. 
the next big thing and the reason why I skipped over the three other settings. Finally, I get to go over how do we actually activate the left and right modifier. Well, the default layout, let me set it to default real quick. We'll use the triggers. Left trigger is the left modifier. Right trigger is the right modifier. Left bumper is called auto run. The really it should be called direct targeting slash auto run. And right bumper is called change hotbar set. Those are the defaults. However, you can modify the trigger and bumper section if you want to. There are some valid arguments for why a person may want to instead use left trigger and left bumper to be the modifiers, and I hope someday to do a theory crafting video specifically on this topic. But for now, I'm going to leave it as default. Then you've got the face button sections. You can technically change these as well. The D-pad can't be configured. I'm not sure why you particularly want to, but if you did, you would have to do some shenanigans in calibration to do so. Then you've got the analog section to pick which one is your character and which one is your camera. And lastly, you've got your left click and right click for when you click in the analog sticks. Now, it comes with defaults that are kind of useless, to be honest, uh, but there's a variety of options here more so than in any of the other sections that you can pick from. Personally, I prefer Execute Macro 98 and Execute Macro 99, which will pick whatever macros you have, an individual, 98 or 99. The game does allow a fair bit of customization regarding the basic functionality of crossbar. The other games of crossbars do a lot more. As a person with a mouse, which both PC and PS4 players can play controller while having a mouse hooked up, I would actually prefer if they would let me use the select and main menu, or rather the buttons that would use it, to be actual actionable buttons on the crossbar with modifiers ideally. Because it is very easy for me to change my HUD with a mouse here and, of course, to actually use the main menu, which is how I would actually do so. Further, it would have been nice to perhaps let me use an action button here and change hotbar set, or if it was required to let that be moved to one of these buttons and to be able to use a trigger or a bumper as part of the crossbar. I would also mention that it would be nice if instead of macros, they would actually have right click and left click actions, which if they didn't want to include modifiers, they could simply put right here in the middle to make it very clear that they don't have modifiers, it's just default behavior. But at least then you could just put your skill on there or your item or your macro if you wanted to, rather than be forced to use a macro. Anyway. Suggestions aside, now to cover the three settings I didn't mention. Let's talk about Enable Windows Zoom VR3. Using this while on a HUD element, we'll cycle through the various size options for it. This is always whatever you've calibrated to R3 and cannot be configured to be changed further in button configuration. So, why did I wait? Well, if you are using R3 for something battle related, there may be times in battle where you accidentally select a HUD element, and now instead of doing whatever is mapped to your R3, you're adjusting window sizes. I put Sprint on my R3 for Macro 99, so failing to do so means I might not get out of an avoidable mechanic, and I get to roleplay as a Black Mage. The next one is Enable Auto Run. This one will actually adjust based on your settings. See if I change this here in button configuration. It will change it in system settings and it's very clear how to use it. The reason to want to turn this off is the same as before, in case of accidental presses in battle. Sure, it's fun to run off the edge, but your party members might disagree. Do know that it only disables the auto run portion of the auto run key. It won't actually stop it from doing its far more important function of handling your direct targeting, which is the main reason why I believe it should be labeled direct targeting slash auto run. 
The last one I skipped is Enable Virtual Mouse. This allows you to use the mouse cursor even if you have no mouse hooked up or you're just too comfy to reach for it. You enable Virtual Mouse by using the Direct Targeting button and R3. Yes, this will change based on what you picked your targeting button to be, which is why I didn't just say that it's L1, the left bumper, and R3. It is whatever you've picked as your auto run button and R3. On screen directions will show you how to use a virtual mouse, and those will just based on your button configuration settings. So, that's it for this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and hopefully we'll see you in future videos about Final Fantasy XIV controller settings. Bye!